Hey everybody, it's your pal Drew Dracy, and this is going to be the first in a series of comic books we probably will never see reprinted in our lifetime. Uh, there's just too much money on the table for either Marvel or uh, MGM to reach some sort of uh, collaboration to reprint these. And you know what? Logan's Run, it's really due for a remake. Uh, I read these comics. Uh, the original movie lasted uh, it, until issue five, and then they tried to continue it, and it just wasn't the same. It was kind of like it was a finite point uh, to the ending of it where there's just nothing to build upon. But, uh, uh, you know, MGM's probably like, well, you know, it ain't worth publishing. And, you know, Marvel's like, uh, well, you know, it ain't. You know, we got to give some money to MGM, uh, and it becomes a mess. Now, I'm ignoring uh, the two main books that will never be reprinted in our lifetime because of similar, or not too dissimilar, uh, situations like Micronauts, which lasted oof, lasted 59 issues, and then it lasted another 20 issues, and then Rom Space Knight lasted one, uh, you know, one through 75 plus four friggin' annuals. Oh, yeah, the Micronauts had annuals, too. And I'll share something about Micronauts later in another episode because we're talking about Logan's Run. All right, stop with that annoying, annoying voice, Drew, please. Now, this was my first issue of Logan's Run I ever had. Um, I don't, you know what? I really wasn't into it because uh, I was a superhero addict, you know. And uh, however, um, I saw this on the stands, and it's by. It's a real treat. Uh, David Anthony Kraft is a writer. George Perez, the penciler. Klaus Janssen on inks. Now you think uh, that's such a likely pair, but nay, nay. Um, stole that from some comedian, I don't remember. Um, so uh, Logan's Run, it's all the same. The same five issues have the same creative team. I know that sounds absurd, but you know, in today's uh, publishing, it's, it's pretty crazy. So, um, anyway, uh, Leaguer's Logan's Run 1. I should just throw it in a puddle of water because uh, my cousin and I bought this at Ide's comic shop when it was in Etna, and it was like a mecca. It was the only place in 1975 or 76 that sold old comics in the area. And uh, we it started raining like crazy. We walked all the way from his house to the comic shop and then back and it pissed down rain like crazy after the comic shop and you know back then we had the paper bags you know some comics still do like the paper bag sleeves and uh uh yeah phantom of the attic in Monroeville still does that and that's that's kind of fun it's like a callback to more innocent time all right now um anyway yeah and i dropped sean's copy of logan's run in the in a puddle and I didn't hear the end of it forever and a day. <laughs> Not really. He didn't bust my balls too much. But uh, well, let's start, okay? This is a Perez Inc. by Milgram. You know, it's pretty decent. Um, and here we go. We go just jump it in with a nice splash page. Uh, George Perez, artist. Klaus Jansen, inker. Oh, they're both artists. But Gary Conway started it off. Uh, right around this time, when comics went 30 cents, I mentioned this before in other episodes, that uh, Gary Conway, like, he basically took over Marvel. He became the editor-in-chief and immediately signed himself eight Marvel titles and knocked a lot of writers aside. Then he left three months later. And they had to reconfigure everything and not go back to the previous storylines, but they kind of had to build on it. And it's a real weird thing. In some cases, it really worked. In some cases, it didn't. Uh, so, you know, we see a runner. And he gets wiped out by a Sandman. Now, the backstory story is, um, and you know what? With everybody, like, some people complain about overpopulation, some not. And uh, it's, it's an interesting subject. And this was kind of ahead of its time. Uh, and it's also, I read the comic books when it came out love the art love it. you know the way it was done as, as a comic book it's done way better whoops sorry about that patsy um it's uh way better than the than the movie i, I just remember the movie being okay and i'm like why aren't they they're relaunching everything they're like rebooting everything they're rebooting stuff that's only two years old uh so it's like logan's run is just begging to be 
you know, uh, I don't know if it's a rights issue or if it's a lack of imagination issue. Well, anyway, the story behind it is um, this is the far future. Uh, and what they do is, by the time you turn 30, your life crystal on your palm, which everybody gets, uh, you're ready for renewal. And renewal is a thin, it's a deception. Basically, they don't want anybody over 30. And uh, much like the comic book industry. So <laughs> they... Uh, uh, so they get these people in robes, and they all go, fl the flame out's about to begin, and these people are soaring, and it's it's sold, renew, renew, and it's sold as if, uh, you know, they're going to heaven or something like that, but really what they're doing is they're killing people for population control, and uh, God, it's just I'm telling you, uh, the, also beautiful art, oh my goodness, so there are some runners who do not buy into this and that's why they have sand men they're called sand man oh sand men so uh man that's beautiful artwork and there's another guy there hello runner that's our hero logan okay yep and there's francis uh and they kind of play around with him you know runner the, the game's over right now so they get just plain killed and I guess buried or something, maybe. Um, uh, this Perez, I'm just going to do this slowly because the Perez Jansen art is just incredible. Because uh, early on, Perez, he was pretty spot on, but there were a few things where maybe facially or anatomy, he might have been a little off because he was a new kid in town. But when Joe Simmett inked him on Fantastic Four um, uh, and Klaus Jansen here, it, it's just a great marriage. I mean, you're getting the best of two giants in the industry. I mean, people don't look at, back then at uh, Jansen as a giant in the industry, but, you know, he's proven that again and again uh, when he went over to D.C. and he did some, uh, he did a Captain America Punisher miniseries. Uh, and he meets, uh, what's her name, Jessica? Yeah, 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 something like that. Um, he was killed like all the others. Killed? What kind of word is that? That's what happens, right? You go to Carousel, you flame out, you die. And when he died, I felt so sad, so awful. I had to do something, uh, anything. So I put myself on the circuit. What do you... Why did you say killed? Because that's what you do, isn't it? Sandmen kill. I never killed anyone in my life. Sandmen terminate runners, that's all. And, uh, you know, she's trying to tell him, and he's not really buying into it. He's like, uh, look, everyone's got the same chance. You try free renewal and you try as hard as you can. Otherwise, when this turns black, the uh, crystal on his hand, in case you can see it, it's over. Over just like that. Just like that. And uh, he's like, uh, mind showing me your hand? Green. Where is it when you go red next year? So, uh, and you're not even 21. Why worry about turning 30? Uh, so, his pal shows up. A couple of, couple of chicks in each arm. A chickeny charm. Uh, let's see. I think I had it at the restaurant yesterday. A chickeny charm. It was really good. Um, just beautiful detail. And you know what? Logan's Run was a good movie, but Perez really added extra visuals. And this is. This goes back to the. Uh, it goes back to the premise that in comic books there's no. Um, there's no uh, budget for special effects, you know, and George Perez, uh, you know, needless to say, was a master of special effects. Uh, so, I don't know what he does. Uh, I don't know what he's doing. Oh, he gets sent into uh, a special room, and uh, he finds out that his life clock is over. Life clock altered. Take object with you. What about my four years? How do I get it back? How do I get it back? So he begins to run. Ah, uh, Jansen double lighting. It's beautiful. Okay, but I didn't buy this issue. I mean, I was, I would, finish, I would gulp down all the comics I buy, then I jump onto my cousin's comics and read them. Uh, I was just that voracious, and thank God I got into the comics industry. Otherwise, it would have been a complete waste of time. Uh, I don't know who inked that, but it's okay. I don't even know if it's it's a. Uh, it's kind of Perez, but now that is awesome. Oops. And like the the white zip tone to give that sense of distance uh, through the glass. 
And, uh, you know, again, David Anthony Crap and Perez and Jansen, just a team supreme. Uh, so he's just kind of... Here's the flashback. You know, back back then, it was always a flashback to the previous issue, but Perez always, always, always found a, a unique way to do it, you know? And uh, influenced a lot of people that way. Uh, so he's got, I've got no time, no time at all. So, and he's not really letting on what's going on. Help me, Jessica. I can't. Look, I may have been a Sandman, but I also know I'm just doing my job. And uh, please help me. Okay, but I can't promise you anything. Should I read the whole thing to you? Nah. So, uh, that's a great imagery. There, the crystal. And here are some rebels talking. And uh, they're just trying to... They're trying to change things. So, guy's about to take him out. Uh, Logan, and he turns around. He, all of a sudden, he gets a, a transceiver uh, sounding alarm. And just before he gets strangled by one of the... Uh, what you call them? Revolutionaries, I guess. Uh, so, now, oh, look at that land. Oofa, oofa. That's just beautiful. And, uh, you know, Perez sets up the beautiful uh, scenery, the beautiful detail, and then Klaus Jansen adds the right amount of grit to it because. Uh, the Cubs are here. There's these young kids that are, uh, you know, they're like uh, scavengers, basically. And uh, they take what they want. I don't know what happens when they get older. It's not explained, but I don't care. Um, and he's threatening them. And they have a special, I don't know what it's called. It's uh, something called muscle. And it, what does it do? Suck muscle. Um... Real bad case of the shakes. You can't hold your breath forever. Breaks free. And uh, they get away. So he's explained, you know, she's upset. She's scared. And uh, Logan and... Uh, is her name Jessica? I keep forgetting. I read too many comic books. So uh, there. Um, she leaves. And they're like, good luck. And he, Logan's best friend, takes her out. So... Now, this is the first issue I bought, and it was probably because there were no superheroes on the stand. So I'm like, oh, well, this is George Perez. I'll check it out. Because you know what? A lot of times, movie adaptations at the time, they kind of sucked. They did, I mean, Planet of the Apes is fun, but you could sort of tell George Tusco was going through the motions, and he probably had delays because you got to get approval from the movie, uh, you know, the uh, companies. But. Uh, Man, I don't. I think this came out prior, and uh, it really sucked me in. I was like, "This is amazing," you know. I don't like George Perez. Uh, you know, he's trying to get healed. She's supposed to be Fair Fawcett Majors, but I guess maybe they didn't get. You have to get likenesses back then. You know, like you couldn't make Harrison Ford look like Han Solo and vice versa. And uh, why did I say vice versa? So this is supposed to like heal your body, and then this guy's just like ready to. Kill him because he's with the underground. So, our pal Logan, he's just a persistent cuss. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. You know? And, uh, you know, he's ready to take that, uh, take his girlfriend, and, uh, <laughs> Logan has to take him out. And they run, run, run. Some Kirby crackle. Subscribe! Um,. That's a great panel there. Uh, he shot a Sandman. I couldn't. I couldn't let him kill you. You're all I believe in. I don't know what to say. He said, "Let's get the fuck out." I mean, he says, "Let's get out of here." Nice little uh, gap, a gap in the uh, imagery behind the the uh, the netting or the fencing or whatever you call it. I'll get both of you. It's just amazing stuff. And you know, it totally this first. To me, this was my first issue, and I knew everything that was going on. And you know, there's but there's not a lot of um, uh, not a lot of, how do you call it, da, exposition. Uh, it's mostly functional conversation. And, uh, there we go. Box. Now, the one in the movie, it, it was a neat idea, but it just really wasn't that interesting. And I'd seen the movie way after I read the comic. But George brings the juice. Oh, my God, it's so beautiful. 
I am Box. So they basically got a way through like this waterway, and now they're in this subterranean place with this creature named Box. And he, he goes, I'd like to sculpt you. And look how sinister that is. I mean, you can't tell me, you cannot tell me that the movie looks better than this. And you can't tell me they can't remake it. I mean, what the, what's the deal? I mean, maybe there's no demand for it because not enough people know of it. it. It's sort of a generational thing. You know, only old fan geek guys like me. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, fuck it. Anyway, they somehow get outside of the dome that they lived in. There's a song by the church, uh, uh, which is Steve Kilby. It's an Aussie kind of goth band. And, uh, see, they see it outside. And there's, there's a song called uh, Dome, and it sounds like he's he was talking about this movie. Uh, long story. Look it up and listen to it. Okay. And they get out, and there's like all this ancient, uh, that's the Washington Monument, Look at all that. And, you know, the organic work of Jansen is just... Whew. And they run into, spoiler, spoilers, an old man. He's cracking nuts and snagging on them, and they just can't believe it. Those cracks on your face, do they hurt? Oh, no. May I touch them? Oh, my. Please do. And he's lonely because uh, he got out a long time ago. So, uh, jump in the head, jump in the head. Because I, you know, you could you want to read some of it. You don't want me to spoil it. I don't know who inked this, but it's it's nice. It might be might be George himself. I don't know. Um, ah, look at that. So and Ryan, he definitely did the lettering on that too. Because when George really George was really good at uh, incorporating the lettering. I mean, he took the stuff. He took the best stars of, of uh, Neil Adams and Jim Steranko, and then added a little dash of what he does. Uh, so prepare to die, runner. Okay, listen to me. Psh, I'm like a little kid with a sound effects. Um, I'm gonna get past this because I don't want to wreck it. Well, uh, they go, uh, they head back to the dome. And, oh my gosh, that is just great. Oof, uh, I keep saying great. Is there any, I gotta think of a better word. Ornate. Well, they swim back and they go inside the dome. Don't go there. Renewal is a lie. And uh, they, let me see. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow, 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 wow. So, what happens anyway? Explodes. Uh, something set off a series of blasts. Uh, I don't know what. But, but uh, when you read about it, it'll happen. Uh, people lunge at, and uh, the day of reckoning has arrived for a system calculated to eliminate its self determination. Uh, Logan is up to us to lead the people outside there's still time because I never expected this never wanted this to happen I guess it was because it was a uh, like a crowd you know get stamp some people get stampeded and killed and uh, they all look outside and they see this old man and uh, it creates new hope in the future it is beginning to an end next issue no 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 it should have been a five issue miniseries, but they didn't do miniseries back then, did they? I don't know. A miniseries doesn't come around until uh, I think the first Batman one, the Untold Tale of Batman or Smallville. Well, they tried to continue it. Nice Galacy cover there. And uh, this book is worth a ton of money if it's in good shape. This is well read, well loved. It's not worth a thing. Well, they jumped into Aftermath. Uh, John Warner, new writer, Tom Sutton, and Terry Austin, which is a really cool combo because Tom Sutton's not what you would call a standard Marvel artist. He's always been his own, uh, he's always just been his own, you know, his own style is unique and it's not uh, to be duplicated. But Terry Austin kind of brings back that Marvel sheen to it. So they're like, uh, look at you, here, blah, 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 blah. We don't want to grow up. We don't want to grow old. Blah, 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 blah. You know, so Roger Daltrey's done. Uh, and everybody just kind of, it becomes chaos again and it just kills, uh, it totally kills uh, any. Uh, I don't know, any, uh, what do you call any faith in the ending of the actual movie and the actual story. There's just no need to continue this. It's a lot like uh, the Omega Men. Okay, focus, people. Focus. I'm gonna, I ain't moving anywhere until you focus, motherfucker. Here, how's that? How's that? Better? Better? Maybe? All right. Well, anyway, 
No, no, I could wait all day, camera. Get your head out of your ass. Well, Logan's run six. Come on, we can do it. Come on, you and me together. One, two, focus. Well, shit. Um, anyway, this has a backup story by Jerry Bingham, and it deals with, okay, it deals with Thanos. Up, oh, see, as soon as Thanos shows up, so does the focus. Uh, Archie Goodwin was editing, and Scott Edelman, who, he did a lot of Captain Marvel uh, in the 70s, and he did some other books. He also worked for Foom Magazine, which was the in-house, uh, you know, it was before Marvel Age. It was this big magazine. It was pretty cool. Mike Zeck, one of his early jobs, he was just coming out of Charlton, I think, and he was about to do, uh, it's just filling stuff. So this, this, this is worth a lot of money because it's an early, it's a Thanos solo story for one thing. He never got his own solo story. He was always in Captain Marvel. Uh... But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, maybe they've reprinted it, and it was just filler because uh, I, I don't know why. Maybe it was the, the dreaded deadline doom, as he always called it. And I was just saying, yeah, the Cubs are back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the Cubs. And here you get uh, Tom Sutton and Klaus Jansen, which is a really interesting pairing. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's my friend. I had a friend growing up who was such a snob about the Marvel way of... of inking and finishing stuff and everything should look like Joe Sennett and granted everything looked like Joe Sennett it'd be cool but he hated Bob Layton on Iron Man who I thought was perfect on Iron Man I still do and he hated Klaus Janssen on Daredevil and I loved him and he's like oh they should switch roles blah 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 see how you like that and I'm like you know find your choice of hells and just go straight to it and uh, so, and like I said, this is just pointless. We're, they're regurgitating a lot of stuff. And, you know, John Warner's trying. Uh, he John Warner wrote a lot of black and white comics for Marvel. And he did some other stuff. He did, he did a few issues of Captain America after Stingle, Steve Englehart left. And uh, let's see if this goes on. Uh, next issue. Now, this wasn't what usually, as I've said many, many times before, it doesn't say... Check our letters page for a special announcement, which means this book's going in the shitter. See if it says anything here. No, no, no. They keep up the uh, the pretense that the book was going to go on. So, anyway, guys, anybody, re somebody in Hollywood with a lick of sense, uh, m remake this movie, do it justice. Uh, because I, like I said, I saw the movie later and it was good, but just it was a little too polite by contrast. And this thing, I mean, okay, screw these two issues. I mean, these are like these are your templates, you know. So, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. This is my like I said, my very first episode on uh, books will never live to see reprinted. <laughs> Real cheery subject, huh? All right, I'll be talking at you soon.